All right, we're, we're in the room. It's loading. It's locked right now so nobody can see us. Got a beard, man. It's looking good. Thanks, Growing man. it long. Yeah, I figured I might as well grow it out. Block as much as my face as possible during this time. <laughs> um, All right, so I'm going to make it... Uh, I'm going to try to make it available for everybody. All right. And of course, it won't let me do it. You can see us? Oh, perfect. OK. So, <laughs> so I guess we are live. So good, good thing we didn't say anything to We're going to start here in a couple minutes. Um, we got about two minutes before we do our salute to service. Van Horn Law Group honors our heroes with special guest, James Heaton. So you, you guys doing anything special for uh, Veterans Day over there? Um, you know, just the usual. We're actually closed today at the office. So Mission United tends to have people going around, well, when it's not COVID, going around to uh, different uh, communities and different cities and municipalities that are having get-togethers and making sure we have a presence there and giving everyone an opportunity to to honor our veteran uh, in the locations that we live in. So it's it's uh, it's an interesting year that we're not able to necessarily do that in person. I know most of these cities aren't doing uh, get-togethers and and gatherings at memorials and whatnot. So it's it's definitely interesting. So this is what we're doing this year. <laughs> so thank well, you. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you were able to make it. Uh, we're one minute to start, so we're going to get started uh, now, and then we'll get people updated as, as, they, uh, as they watch. Uh, James, thank you for joining us on this. Uh, this is going to get the word out to many people, many veterans out there especially, that need the help, uh, that there's actually a lot of help that they might not know about in, in Broward County. So, um, James, I'm, I'm going to say a little bit about you because I know your resume is very long. You've been doing this for years, helping out uh, veterans. You're the supervising attorney with Mission United Veterans Pro Bono Project. I've worked, worked with you on many different things, committees, events, uh, pro bono cases. I appreciate your leadership in this space. Uh, if you're not familiar with Mission United, it's the Veterans Pro Bono Project in partnership with United Way of Broward County. And basically, there, you guys are providing 100% free service for veterans, correct? Give me a little more information on that. Correct. So as, uh, as you mentioned, Chad, uh, it's a partnership between Legal Aid Service of Broward County and the United Way of Broward County. Uh, we provide a wide variety of civil legal services to income eligible veterans here in Broward uh, through our Legal Aid Project uh, with the help of pro bono attorneys like, like Chad and many others who uh, provide and volunteer their time to assist our veterans who are most in need. Uh, great program. Absolutely, and and you're also the president-elect for the Broward County Bar Association Young Lawyers Section. Is that correct? Yeah, don't let the beard fool you. Uh, that's <laughs> great. Um, they haven't figured out yet that I do still qualify as a young lawyer. So uh, next year I'll be the uh, the president of the Young Lawyers Section, assuming I don't rapidly age or something happens. Uh, that's awesome, and and uh, honestly, with all you do, I, I'm I, I can't I don't know where you find the time or the energy, but. Uh, <laughs> But I, I appreciate it, and uh, the veterans definitely appreciate it. So uh, let's get into it. Our, the, today's topic, Salute to Service, Van Horn Law Group, and James Heaton honors our, our heroes. Uh, perfect day for it. It's Veterans Day. We can't do, as you were saying earlier, we can't do the things that we normally would be doing. Uh, so at least we can ho hopefully get some information out there that, that might help the veterans. Uh, so let's let's go through some of the problems that that you see that the the veterans are facing, and, and let's talk about how we might be able to address those problems. Um, so, yes. of, please, no, uh, no, please lead. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 I, I'll start with uh, where, where I fit in uh, the financial issues, obviously, that the veterans are facing. So, if a veteran is facing a financial issue, how do they get in touch with you? Kind of, what's the process if they're if they're struggling with some debt? Sure. Fortunately, in Broward County, we have a pretty robust network through 211. So veterans anywhere in the county can just pick up their phone, dial 211, and be connected to an operator uh, that will then link them up to a whole uh, suite of services, which also include peer-to-peer -peer services if, uh, with other veterans if that is uh, requested. And those services are really robust here in Broward. So 
Uh, it's everything from housing and employment assistance to education assistance, legal assistance, healthcare assistance, or financial stability. And many of those services either provided uh, by the United Way of Broward County's Mission United or through one of the partner agencies in the community. So that's really the first step uh, and the recommended point of entry. Uh, if you're not already uh, linked up into the system with an organization like Mission United or like Operation Sacred Trust, uh, just dial 211 from your phone and you can be linked up uh, to one of these organizations that can help uh, you know, get you the services that you're looking for. And, and obviously 2020 has been a different year um, than, than most. Ha have you seen certain requests, an uptick in certain requests regarding any certain debt, whether it be eviction, credit cards, or, or, or anything going on? Yeah, so we have seen a lot of, uh, of an increase in consumer debts like credit card debts and how to resolve those issues. Evictions have been uh, a huge roller coaster of a ride in the legal world over the past few months with the issuances of, uh, of state moratorium uh, and federal moratoria and now the CDC order and what applies to me, what doesn't apply to me, how do I navigate this? So a lot of eviction uh, defense work as well has been coming our way. And really a lot of it has just been advice and counsel and, and helping uh, our veterans navigate the system uh, to, to uh, give them the tools to be you know, proactive on, on how to uh, handle these issues before they become real big legal problems. Um, one of the things that we've seen kind of steering away from are some of the federal debts. So the Department of Veterans Affairs has uh, kind of uh, provided some additional services in dealing with outstanding debts. They've put a hold on uh, pursuing new uh, federal debts from the VA. So we, we've seen kind of a, a, a tick back a little bit of those types of debts, but you know, people trying to address their consumer debts right now has been uh, been very prevalent. Yeah, and, and that it's hitting the veterans hard. And it's, it's hitting everybody hard right now. So we appreciate, mm -hmm. we got James, James Heaton from Mission United. Uh, he's an attorney that's helping so many veterans in Broward County. Uh, how, how about job placement? I, I know that, you know, there, there was an initial jobless wave uh, that came through and I'm sure that that affected Im, impacted veterans. Is there any help for uh, veterans that, you know, lost their jobs? Yeah, absolutely. So as I was mentioning, through Mission United, they have an employment coordinator. They uh, work with organizations such as Career Source Broward, but that's not the only uh, method. So we have a, a, a employment um, coordinator who helps evaluate each veteran's independent needs and can provide them with job leads. And um, I've seen some of these emails and some of the jobs that are on there that are available are just outstanding jobs. So these aren't, you know, Burger King and McDonald's. These are jobs that are going to pay you a, a living wage. Um, and they can be used as bridge the gap jobs as well. So this doesn't necessarily mean you have to make a career doing this job, but it definitely will pay well enough to keep you and your family housed and fed uh, for this foreseeable future while you work with other programs uh, such as some vocational training or vocational rehabilitation through the VA or through a local program uh, to help either build further certifications or fine tune some job skills or resumes to help you re-enter the workforce in a position that you're looking for in a career that you want to actually pursue. And, and we're going to go to my favorite part of this segment. We're going to talk about some success stories. So I, I know that um, you've helped so many uh, veterans out there. Are, are there are, are one or two that come to mind of, you know, like this person came to me, they're, they were down and out, they didn't think there were many options, and, and thank God for Mission United and you that they were able to come out of it the other side uh, much stronger. Yeah, absolutely. So one of my favorite stories is uh, one of our veterans who was a post 9-11 vet. He served two combat tours over uh, in Afghanistan, came wow. back um, with some, fortunately, uh, well, fortunately he came back and was able to re-enter the workforce. Uh, but soon after that, he started having some mental health issues and also started having some physical issues as well. Now, one of his biggest problems was his chronic fatigue syndrome. So it's one of these things where you don't really know what's happening to you. His, his uh, arm starts hurting and his ribs start hurting and his legs start hurting. And he doesn't really know what's going on. Well, uh, he came to us after he got denied uh, service-connected disability. And he wanted to know, James, he's like, I don't know what's going on with me. They're saying they don't know what it is. And I need some help navigating this system because he had lost his job. Um, he was trying to rejoin the workforce, but wasn't really having a lot of success. And he was, you know, getting a lot of the uh, debt piling up uh, during this time as well. So we helped him with the uh, VA service-connected disability claim. 
we helped him gather all these medical records and uh, put together a compelling case about the chronic fatigue syndrome, about some of his mental health conditions, and how it really impacted his uh, employability. And it turned around, uh, the VA ended up granting him 100% service connection. Uh, he, was, he worked with Mission United to find a job uh, that works for him with his uh, service-connected disabilities. He got a decent amount of retroactive pay that was able to settle all of his uh, consumer debts with, and he's in a much better spot now than he was when he came uh, to us. And he's, he's a great uh, human being. Uh, we still keep in touch to this day. Uh, he'll email me, uh, tell me about what he's up to. Uh, fortunately, he doesn't qualify for our services anymore because he's gainfully employed. Uh, but that's a good thing. That means he's moved that on to being able to be self-sustainable for uh, him and his family. So it's it's a great story. Yeah, and, and one of my favorite clients that, that you sent over our way actually uh, was a World, World War II veteran mm -hmm. uh, that, that we were able to offer pro bono. And I, I'll never forget they said, uh, you know, I, I survived the war to end all wars, but I, I couldn't survive COVID, COVID and, the, and the economy. Uh, to, to not file bankruptcy, but uh, they were a, a joy to work with. And, um, you know, the, the, they're just such good people that are getting in, into bad spots right now. Obviously, mm -hmm. COVID's affecting every industry you can potentially do. Uh, what are the requirements to get the pro bono? Uh, what are the limits to get pro bono uh, through Mission United and Legal Aid? Sure. So through our program specifically, uh, you have to, uh, we do a financial el eligibility check. And that means that we look for, uh, for the income that's currently available to the veteran, we look at 200% uh, of the federal poverty guidelines, which uh, takes into account uh, other uh, uh, the entire family size. Now we exclude from that calculation any VA benefits that are coming in and any social security, especially social security disability benefits coming in. So really any untaxed benefits or untaxed income, we don't include that into that calculation. So it's 200% of the poverty guideline you know, excluding those benefits. And then we do an asset check as well. Uh, as part of the asset check, we do take into consideration the entire family unit and the size of the family. And we exclude from that a homestead property, a personal vehicle for each adult in the family. So we don't include that as assets. And um, we're really just looking for uh, any, any assets that uh, uh, you may have that go above and beyond what that poverty uh, limit is. So we can be pretty flexible with this. And it gives us the ability to really help and uh, when it comes to veterans that are on the, uh, the cusp of poverty, that not, not necessarily, they don't have to be the most poor, uh, but we're really looking for those that are really the asset limited, income constrained, uh, maybe even employed, what uh, the United Way calls the Alice population of, uh, of veterans. We're able to help those uh, folks. So uh, it's a little bit above and beyond what some of the other legal aid programs can help with but uh, we're uh, not able to help everybody because of yeah. these limitations. Well, well in, in, in a way, you still are able to help the people that are above those limitations, and you have an extensive network of attorneys. You know, Obviously, Van Horn Law Group, we're all in. Uh, if, if you're not eligible for, for pro bono, we'll do discounted services, we'll do zero down, we'll do what, whatever it takes to make sure people are getting the, the help that they need because uh, this is when you're dealing with debt and when you're dealing with all these issues, obviously, it can create uh, a lot of mental stress and, and a lot of our veterans are dealing with PTSD and other issues that, that, that they're already dealing with. So for us to help out a little bit by taking at least that stress away, um, we, you know, we're happy to do it, even if they don't qualify for the pro bono through, through legal aid. And I know that you have many attorneys that, uh, that, that feel that, that the same mm -hmm. way. Um, something I learned from you that, that I had no idea about, and uh, I'm catching you off guard with this question. It's not on our, on our outline. So I hope, I hope you're prepared. So it's a big deal for veterans to make sure that they have an honorable discharge. And it's not just honorable and dishonorable discharge. Um, there's also a less than honorable that can cause a real issue for veterans, right? Sure. Yeah. So technically, there's six different characters of service that a veteran can receive when they leave the military. Now, overwhelmingly, an honorable discharge on their DD-214, which is the discharge uh, paperwork that they receive the form, pretty much DD-214, um, an, an honorable discharge is overwhelmingly the most common type of discharge. But other types of characters of service, as Chad was mentioning, there's a, a general under honorable conditions, which is more or less honorable. Then you start getting into the uh, the you know the less favorable discharges. There's an other than honorable discharge, which is uh, administrative type of discharge where it's essentially a, a scarlet letter on the veterans uh, uh, DD-214 
Um, and then there's punitive discharges. So you could have a bad conduct discharge, which you can receive through a court martial proceeding, which is akin to a federal misdemeanor. It remains on your criminal record. Or, uh, you know, maybe something really bad happened and through the court martial process, you received a dishonorable discharge, which is the worst of the worst of the punitive discharges akin to a federal felony remains on your criminal record. And those, you know, if you have a less than honorable discharge, uh, they can really impact your ability to uh, return to the civilian world and, you know, hit the ground running. You know, you might lose out on opportunities for jobs, even though you may be qualified. You, it could be something you did through your entire time in the military. And uh, now you may not be qualified because you don't have an honorable discharge. It could prevent you from getting certain types of benefits available from the VA or maybe state benefits or local benefits, because maybe you're not a veteran under the definition of the people who are providing those benefits. Um, and it could, you know, just prevent you from, uh, uh, it, it could be part of your, your criminal record. So maybe you had a uh, bad conduct discharge and you're really working to, to better your life, but you then, you know, run in, have another run in with the police. They may look at that as you not being a first time offender. And it could be, uh, it could cause a, a whole downward spiral and snowball effect in the negative way. So it's, it's important um, to, to know how those types of discharges can impact your, your life. And from what I understand, that there are ways um, that you can upgrade, if you will, your, your discharge, especially if the laws have changed and, you know, if a lot of luck. You know, when we have the Vietnam vets, things were much different then than they, they are today. So uh, I, I understand that the VA may be open if, if you go to the right channels to uh, changing that, which would be a big deal for, for a lot of the vets. Is, is that accurate? Absolutely. And, you know, there's two big aspects of it. One is uh, you, there, there's many veterans who have an other than honorable discharge who get turned away from VA healthcare, not because the VA is evil and against them. It's just that sometimes the people that are uh, at the, the, the front uh, door looking at their paperwork uh, might not be doing the deep dive that's that's necessary. So it's something that uh, that we can help with if you have an other than honorable discharge and you're suffering from uh, disabilities that are related to your military service, uh, you may be eligible to get VA uh, healthcare benefits. Now that doesn't necessarily mean you can get compensation benefits from the VA. And then the other area of that is through the uh, military, through an administrative process called a discharge upgrade or a correction of military records, where you can apply to one of these two boards uh, and request that they change your actual DD-214 from maybe other than honorable to something more favorable uh, so you can get benefits. And the main, uh, the main things that those boards look at, um, they're looking for principles of fairness. Uh, was your discharge too harsh based on the circumstances? Did the military branch not follow proper legal procedures when, uh, uh, when discharging you or separating you from the military? Uh, they'll also look at other specific factors such as uh, was the misconduct that led to your separation um, uh, just symptomatic of maybe post-traumatic stress disorder that uh, was developing at the time that maybe they, they didn't have an understanding of it. Um, and then they'll also look at too for some of the older discharges or even some of the more recent discharges. Uh, what has your life been like since service? You know, were you young and dumb in the military and maybe did something stupid at 1920 that uh, got you kicked out? But, you know, in the past 10 years, you've been a pastor and <laughs> helping out the community and uh, just been, you know, worked really hard to rehabilitate your life and, and change uh, who you used to be to who you are today. And is your story compelling enough for the board to then uh, make that impact your discharge? You know, there's so many factors that, uh, that go into play when seeking a discharge upgrade. Now, quickly too, I just wanna talk about, because there's a couple of things I hear all the time about misinformation in the military, where, uh, oh, I was told that if I just keep my nose clean for 10 years, it'll automatically upgrade itself. Unfortunately, that's not true. There's no automatic upgrade that occurs. Um, in reality, you have to apply to either the, the Board of Correction of Military Records or the Discharge Re Review Board um, in order to get that changed. And, and there's a 15 year statute of limitations for the first board. If you're outside that 15 years, don't worry. The other board uh, usually waives their statute of limitations uh, in order to get you some relief there. That's great information. And, and that was something that I was completely unfamiliar with. And, and uh, you know, during our committee meetings, you, you always are very good at educating us on, on what's going on. So I'm glad the information got out there because I'm sure there's a ton of people that, that need this help that have no idea that it's available. So mm -hmm. uh, thank you for thank you for getting that information out. Speaking of help, I, I understand that uh, legal aid and specifically Michigan United 
does need some help from lawyers. There are some busy areas uh, of uh, Mission United and, and a lot of requests. Um, what are some of those areas and, and how can uh, attorneys and individuals uh, that are not attorneys get involved? Sure, absolutely. So we're always looking for assistance in some of our big ticket areas. So some of our biggest areas of need are family law. Um, family law is above and beyond the number one area of need that we're receiving uh, requests for assistance for. We have a staff attorney dedicated to family law, but it's not enough. Uh, he's handling a, a huge caseload of his own right now, um, but we're always looking for more attorneys to help out by taking cases for our veterans. And family law can be uh, anything from dissolution of marriage to post-judgment issues, so modifications of child support or time sharing. Um, all these cases are reviewed by an attorney beforehand for merit. So, you know, you're not necessarily going to be taking a case that is a, a complete dud. But, um, you know, as and every case is, you know, we want to make sure that it's something that you're interested in helping uh, out with. So if you're not comfortable with a uh, uh, post-judgment modification case, let us know and we won't give that type of case to you. Uh, we're not just going to dump a case on your lap. Um, unless you're Chad, we're not, <laughs> we'll, uh, <laughs> all the cases that we give you are, uh, are cases that you're looking to help out with. Other areas, VA benefits, uh, military discharge upgrades. These areas are, uh, they're frequently requested as well. And we're happy to help provide some type of training in those areas. If it's something you're interested in doing, administrative law is pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm happy to provide training either one-on-one -on -one or in groups if we have enough people. Um, and also uh, uh, areas such as uh, real estate, estate planning, all of those uh, types of civil legal areas. Uh, civil litigation is another big area. So if your firm handles civil litigation cases and you want to help out with some contract disputes, uh, we have, uh, especially here in South Florida, a lot of issues with contracts with roofers, with um, auto repair uh, mechanics, with, uh, with personal contracts that just fell through where our veterans are left high and dry and are really looking for anything uh, that an attorney can offer to help. Um, in addition, really any area of civil legal, uh, immigration, for example, employment discrimination and lost wages, consumer debts and everything in between, uh, we're looking for attorneys to help out. So if you're interested in joining uh, that team of volunteers, let me know. Um, I'll explain in a second uh, how you can reach out to us. But in addition to attorneys, uh, mediators. So if you're a mediator and you want to provide pro bono assistance as a mediator, come our way. We're always looking for more mediators to help out. Uh, many of our veterans, since uh, they may not, they, they fall in that, that uh, gap of poverty that they may not qualify for indigent status from the court, but they definitely can't afford private mediation and the, uh, the expense that that brings. So we're looking for mediators to help out there uh, in family law and in other areas of civil law as well. Um, experts, you know, maybe you're an expert, uh, you're, you know, you're a mechanic or you were a mechanic or you know someone who's a mechanic or a home appraiser or somebody who can help out as an expert um, to uh, provide pro bono advice uh, or maybe expert testimony in one of these cases. That can be helpful as well. Um, but yeah, and if there's anything else that, uh, that you have, any skills that you might have that you're interested in volunteering to help us out in our program, let me know if it's not going to help us out directly. I can put you in touch with some of the folks at Mission United that may be able to use that help as well. Landlords, homeowners, whatnot. So, so basically, if you have a pulse and a brain, uh, we'll, we'll find something for you to for, exactly. for you to do and help help veterans out. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and uh, I, I my firm is committed, obviously, to working with you, and we want to keep up our, our record of we've never turned down uh, a referral from you. So uh, so please keep keep them coming. Uh, we want to make sure that all the veterans are, are taken care of, especially with, with their debt issues. Uh, if somebody needed, wanted to get in contact with you, uh, with Mission United and get involved, how, how would they do that, James? Sure. So if you're looking to get involved, there's really a, a few entry points here. Uh, one is on Legal Aid's website. So legalaid.org. Very simple. It's like we're the first legal aid to have technology ever. I don't know how we got that website. <laughs> Great. So legalaid.org uh, is Broward County, uh, is Legal Aid Service of Broward County's website. Go on there, um, there's a volunteer tab and click on the Mission United project and there's a brief questionnaire that will populate an email sent to me and that will have those practice areas that you're interested in helping in. Uh, I'll follow up with you directly from there and we can have a chat. Or you can uh, reach out to me through email. 
So missionunited at legalaid.org. That's an email that goes directly to me. Uh, and you'll be able to just shoot me an email. Hey, James, I saw you on that Facebook Live or I heard about uh, the Facebook Live or whatever it was and I'm interested in, in volunteering. Um, I would like to talk to you more about it. And we can schedule some time to talk over the phone uh, about you know what it is or maybe through Zoom about what it is uh, that um, you're looking to help out with. That's awesome, James. Well, well, thank you for making the time today. Thank you to your incredible staff, everybody over at Legal Aid. I love working with you guys. You, you really do make it easy uh, to take on uh, legal aid cases and pro bono cases. And, and the people that we get to work with uh, throughout this has just been incredible. So thanks again. Um, to, to wrap it up, if, if you need anything from James, he's certainly available. Like I said, he's working all the time. Uh, we're available at Van Horn Law Group. We give all our veterans discounts. All of our consultations are free for everyone. Uh, to get in touch with us, the phone number is 954 six three seven zero 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 van horn law group dot com uh, we're open early late weekends um, we have some free books out there as well if you go if you go to our website you can certainly get those uh, james any, any last words on this uh, beautiful veterans day no i just want to say you know thank you chad for everything that you do for our veterans uh, you and your firm have been excellent, uh, huge supporters of the program. Chad also served on our legal committee for, for quite a while, and just having his expertise and his input has really made an impact on how we serve our veterans in a positive way. Um, I want to wish everyone a happy Veterans Day. Uh, thank you for your service. You know, Veterans Day isn't about us. It's about you, and really just the time to reflect on, on who you are, who you were, and who you've become, and we really appreciate everything that uh, that all of our veterans have done. A big shout out to my father-in-law, Tim O'Connor, who if he's figured out how to use Facebook, hopefully he's watching this, Air Force veteran, a uh, great guy, and, uh, and to all, uh, all veterans who served. I, I couldn't have said it any better. It's certainly my honor to, to serve, and a happy Veterans Day to, to everyone out there. And th thanks again, James. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate it.